My name is Matt Kixmuller. I head up product management and marketing here at Pure Storage. Uh, today's session we wanted to call the flash revolution is right now. And it's just been an incredible year at Pure and in general for this market. Uh, this kind of crazy idea we had five plus years ago now to go create an all-flash array that frankly a lot of people you know, weren't so sure of uh, a few years ago has really taken off. And especially in the last, I'd say, six months, it's really gone mainstream in a big way. And you've just seen incredible growth in the market from Pure and from all of our competitors, frankly. And so mostly what we wanted to do today was two things. We were going to start by giving just a little bit of history on kind of how the market's evolved, what that five-year journey's looked like. Uh, I'm going to start out with that, keep it pretty short. Um, then we've asked Neil Vachajani to come up. Uh, Neil's our chief architect, and he's going to walk through in depth on the whiteboard just how the flash ray works, so you can get a better sense for how it's evolved over time. You know, we did one of those videos five years ago, and uh, it's been one of our most popular videos ever, and we wanted to kind of refresh that and give you a sense for how things have evolved and how things have changed on the platform. And then finally, Vaughn's going to come up after that, Vaughn Stewart, our chief evangelist, and talk a little bit about the market discussion, because there's a lot of uh, questions and kind of dueling between vendors on how to think about this space. And we believe that some of the questions people ask are good, and others you know, might be a little off base, and we just wanted to suggest different ways to think about the market and how we go and talk to customers about all flash storage. So uh, with, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, as Stephen said, it's been an amazing five-year journey, and in some ways I always love to do these events because I feel like I can look back over the events. We do them about once a year and, and track not only the progress of Pure, but the progress of the space at large. Um, when I uh, kind of think about my job, I have to say it's, it's never been a more fun time to be in the storage industry. And I think one of the things that's exciting as I go out and talk to customers is just the level of rethinking of their storage strategy that I see going on is unprecedented right now. And so if you think about the history of storage, it's always been in one way or another defined as kind of a pyramid where you have, broadly speaking, tier one and tier two storage. Tier one was the high-end enterprise, 10 and 15K disk stuff. Tier two was SATA. And of course, there's a lot of gradations in between there. Um, but roughly, each of those were, were 10 or $15 billion markets, about a $30 billion total market. And what I see right now is an immense amount of rethinking of that spend that customers do every year towards both of these. On the tier one space, obviously, there's a massive transition to all flash arrays. Um, we've just seen tremendous growth of replacing tier one arrays out there. And really, customers going from thinking about doing maybe one database or accelerating one application on flash to just wholesale replacements um, by the pallet load, if you will, uh, of racks and racks of storage. Um, but on the second side, I think there's just as much innovation on what I would call the, the second half of the market, the tier two market, where you have next gen hybrid disk arrays, you have hyperconverged appliances, um, and you have things like commodity storage, where more and more people are also asking, hey, should I really be buying that tier two storage array, or are there better ways to think about that? And so it's exciting to go out and just talk to customers about their new plans for how they move their architecture forward and think about the replatforming in their data center. So when we started Pure five years ago, um, we basically saw this massive transition happening with Flash. And we kind of asked ourselves three questions. And I think these three questions really speak to the culture of Pure in a lot of ways. Uh, the first one, very simply, was what if Flash was everyday storage? You know, if you kind of teleport yourself back to 2009, uh, the going price of Flash from your favorite Flash vendors in those days was literally 40 to $80 a gigabyte. And most people were going and basically thinking about Flash as this tier zero acceleration appliance or card, uh, a way to make, frankly, one database go faster. And so the defining kind of thought that, that brought Pure into the world was, hey, look, what can we do to bring this into a mainstream everyday technology and sort the, the complexity and price uh, and enterprise readiness of the medium to make it ready for prime time? Um, the second thing, though, was, look, at the end of the day, um, we're a storage company, not a flash company. And so how can we use this transition to flash to fundamentally rethink storage and make it dramatically simpler? And I say this over and over, but oftentimes when we get introduced to customers, our first array purchase will be driven off of performance. There's something they want to make go faster. Um, but numbers two through N are almost out of simplicity. And it really amazes people uh, how they can break free of the traditional model of managing storage and how much easier storage can be. And then the third piece, and this is something that we're pretty passionate about here, is we just try to think holistically about how we can build a better storage company. And when we were starting the company, we heard a lot of frustration around existing storage products, but also around existing storage companies and some of the ways that they kind of did business and treated customers. And so we've tried to think holistically about how we can come up with pricing models and business models and ways to sell storage and service storage that are unique and differentiated. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So... The idea we had back in 2009 was essentially a, a simple recipe uh, for delivering an all-flash storage array and what the market has now come to term an all-flash storage array. 
Um, the first piece of that was basically to deliver a Flash platform that was disruptive in both economics and performance. And so the performance part of that easy, was easy. It was go 100% Flash. Uh, we made some choices to not only choose Flash, but to really choose consumer-grade MLC Flash and do a lot of work within the software in our array to harden that and make that enterprise class available. The second piece, though, is sorting economics. And our belief was that if we can do things like inline data reduction, inline compression to drive down the cost, we can actually hit price parity with disk. And so if you look at that first generation product we launched in 2011, 2012, our goal was to get it down to about $5 a usable gigabyte. We've been able to shave about a buck a gig off that every year since, and we see that trend continuing pretty aggressively. The second dimension is building a true platform for consolidation. And if you look at a lot of the early Flash plays, they were essentially one of two product ideas, Flash cards or Flash appliances. And they were both basically geared towards accelerating one application or a small set of applications. So our vision was different. We said basically, look, we want to go build something that looks and acts and scales like a traditional storage array. That means all the enterprise class features. That means scalability from a very small number of terabytes up to even petabyte class deployments. And if you look at our biggest customers today, uh, all of them are in the multi-petabyte range. It also means mixed workload consolidation, and a lot of the pain of the original Flash products was they were very much um, engineered to be centric around a certain block size internally, 4K, 8K, you name it. And so they required a lot of tuning up and down the stack to get that database to talk the right block language to that Flash device to get the best performance. And so if you're designing a product for one database, yeah, maybe that's possible, maybe you can go talk to that DBA. But if you're designing a product to host hundreds or thousands of VMs and databases, there's just no way to have that discussion. And so we wanted to build an architecture that is essentially self-tuning. Uh, you never have to worry about block sizes and different types of workloads working together on the array. Uh, the third dimension is always on. We believed you had to set a pretty high bar for enterprise class resiliency to get into the tier one parts of environments. Uh, we tried to set a high bar here to not only the traditional stuff of not losing data and not having availability issues, but also never losing performance. And so we've designed our architecture in a way that literally anything can fail and it'll maintain 100% performance of the system. And this incidentally still remains probably our biggest differentiator out there. You know, what you see in a lot of the world now is other vendors coming to the point where they have checkbox items for a lot of these features, but there's still real differences in the quality of the implementations. And what we find is the biggest difference today still comes down to resiliency. And the best way that we test that with customers is encourage them to do a POC, start failing controllers, pulling wires, you know, seeing what happens. And then uh, the final thing is simple and invisible. And our view here is simple. We want to be simple for storage admins and completely invisible to everybody above storage admins. So we don't want DBAs to have to make choices about how to lay out their database to make the storage happy. Uh, and frankly, we don't even want to have storage admins have to be dedicated to managing our, managing our arrays. And so we found in general that oftentimes people are able to go work on other things, move up the stack, manage virtualization, do things that don't involve babysitting a storage array all day. And that's good for everybody. So. The revolution obviously caught on quickly. Uh, we first launched our product in 2012, and it's just been a, a very quick growth story for Pure. So I'm not going to belabor this too much, but uh, we believe if you look at all the public market comps out there, we've become one of the fastest growing IT companies in history. Um, it's hard to know that because all of the private companies uh, have public information, but if you look at the publicly available ones, we certainly are. Um, we're up to, uh, actually, as of this week, 800 people in Pure, 27 countries, hundreds of partners, and hundreds of patents. And so uh, it's just been a, a rocket ship in terms of growth. Um, but one we've tried to do in a very measured way. We don't grow faster than we can actually organically grow the company. We haven't done acquisitions. We haven't gone out there and tried to grow faster than, uh, than we can hire the best people and build the company in a quality way. Um, we were excited this year to also see the first analyst reports come out in the space. Uh, I believe in previous events like this, it's been said that if you ever put up a slide with the Gartner logo on it, it's like suicide. So I'll keep this part short. Um, but we were excited to... Uh, to You've done it, Sean. There, there we go. Uh, but we were excited to have uh, a pretty good showing, just, let's just say, in uh, the inaugural Gartner Magic Quadrant in the space, as well as uh, the competitive capabilities chart, which showed us at the top for the three use cases we sell into VDI, database, uh, and uh, uh, virtual server. And I'll say in general, I think Gartner actually did a pretty good job of, of reflecting the pulse of the market today. You know, if you look at the three vendors that were in the top right quadrant here, Pure Storage, EMC, and IBM, um, that largely exactly defines who we're up against in almost every one of our head-to-head -head competitive battles in, uh, in customer environments. And so it's very reflective of, we, of what we see in the market. Um, so one of the cool things about uh, this job and this company in general is that it all boils down to people. And if you look at the type of people that buy Flash, um, they aren't people that just buy Flash because they need another storage array. 
they tend to be people that are trying to accomplish something. And so they're trying to get something done in their organizations. And if you can partner with them and make them successful, you create a real awesome point in their career and a point and a help for our company, obviously. And so if you look at the types of customers that we've helped over the years, um, one of the things that surprised me is really the breadth. So some of the largest Wall Street banks, some of the largest web companies in the world, but also Sierra Nevada Brewery, uh, high schools, hospitals, people that are decidedly mid-market and below. And so that breadth of the flash revolution, I think, has really surprised us. Um, but as I said, if you look at the stories that are behind a lot of these examples, you look at Neil from LinkedIn, um, they've just done an amazing job at using Flash across all parts of their operations, doing things like giving a dedicated SAP development instance to every one of their developers, looking at the core site and how they can accelerate a lot of the back-end batch processes just across all parts of the site. Um, you look at Workday, um, Sasha there at Workday was part of an, ac an acquisition they did for a search technology that they had to scale from startup size to all of Workday size almost overnight, and they couldn't have done it without Flash. You look at Brett at Skullcandy, um, he bought us all for analytics. They couldn't basically process a lot of their analytic data to figure out where to stock shelves, what to buy for Christmas, basic things to run their business. We solved that problem, and before long, they built out an entire uh, VSI hosting environment where all their business applications are now on Flash. And if you look at Sierra Nevada, Justin there, um, for them it was all about efficiency. Sierra Nevada cares about being an efficient company. They have an extremely high um, bar around efficiency for their technologies. And they were able to go in and not only save a, a couple hundred grand on hardware, um, but reduce power by 90% in their storage space and uh, overall rack space by 50%. And so the story is very, this is just a, a small smattering of some of the more public ones. Um, but again, it's just exciting to partner with people to help them really accomplish things in their businesses. So we talked a little bit about simpli simplicity earlier. Um, you know, we've focused a lot on building a simple product. We'll show that off in a couple minutes here. Um, but we've also thought a lot about how to be simple in our business model. And so uh, a couple of things we've done here is offer the broadest end-to-end -end guarantee in the industry. People can try our storage. If it doesn't work out for them, they can return it. Um, we've done an all-inclusive software pricing licensing model. This is an interesting one. Um, it's been one I think that a lot of our competition has had a hard time answering. You've seen them do things like, for example, on their all-flash products, be very generous about software licensing, yet still be very conservative about software licensing on their legacy disk products. And so I think it's really starting to question the business model of the industry, and our hope is that we can really change how software is bought and sold in the industry and make it dramatically simpler and fairer. And our belief is that we want customers to use all of our software. We want them to buy our arrays and take advantage of all the features that ship, not just today, but what we develop in the future. Um, professional service is another hot button here. Uh, we don't believe it should have to exist. And so if we deliver a product that requires armies of people in black helicopters to come and tune it and turn knobs just to make it work, uh, then that's a defect in the product. And so we've been very passionate around that. Uh, we do partner with, with great partners to do installation and, and optimization of the environment services but you shouldn't have to have a set of people to run our array. Uh, support, one of our best advantages. People often come to Pure Storage and assume, all right, the product's gonna probably be pretty good, but how will they support me to the extent that an EMC or NetApp or HP or IBM can? And I think what people realize very quickly is that the level of support you can get from a single product company that's focused on doing one thing well uh, far exceeds what you get from larger conglomerates. And it's an area where we constantly win business and just surprise people. And then finally, Forever Flash, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but one of our visions around our product is to really get out of that three-year maintenance cycle, where essentially the storage industry has figured out how to force you to buy a new storage array every three years, whether you like it or not. And so we developed a product, first and foremost, that was very evolutionary in its deployment cycles. You could deploy it, and instead of replacing it and migrating data, you could upgrade its controllers, you could add new storage shelves, you could literally deploy it for 10 years in your data center. At the end of the 10 years, it might have all new pieces, but you never had to go and bring in a new array and move all your data between frames. And so we realized that we needed a business model that matched that. And so with our standard maintenance offering, Forever Flash, customers can buy into that and basically get free controller upgrades and refreshes to their arrays on a periodic basis every three years. And we'll talk more about that, but it's a very unique uh, and interesting thing that we do. So last slide, um, money, right? Um, you know, one of the, the biggest travesties I think about uh, the all flash array space is that our biggest competition is people who self-select out of the space because frankly, they don't believe they're good enough for flash. And part of our religion is to go out there and say, look, yeah, Flash is about performance, but that's not what it's really about. It's about fundamentally better storage. And so by and large, we're always having to convince customers that they should take a look at Flash, they can afford it, and the, the savings around it will be transformative. And so we went out and commissioned a study with Forrester, who actually went out independently and interviewed a number of our customers, and essentially looked and quantified their savings around the platform and around the business value around it, and kind of averaged it out into a pseudo company. And what we found was that average company was able to get 102% ROI 
ROI on their investment in pure storage, uh, recoup their investment in 14 months, and get $2 million of improved benefit out of that. And so very quick ROI, and it just kind of combats that notion that in the past, anyway, Flash was expensive. All right, so I said in the early days of this presentation, early days, uh, that, uh, that we thought some of the questions that were out there in the industry were maybe the wrong questions. And so what we want to do for the rest of this discussion is pose a few questions and ultimately answer them, give you Pure's perspective on how we think about some of these questions, both on the whiteboard and in our dialogue. Um, but here's a few. Uh, the first one's performance, you know, and these are questions fundamentally that customers ask when they evaluate flash storage. You know, can my storage do a, a million IOPS? And our view here is that if you're buying flash storage today based on the IOPS on the, on the spec sheet, um, you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, the entire experience is much more important. The second thing I see a lot of is architecture sword play. And this kind of happens in the early days of markets. Um, before leaders emerge and before there's really track records of products, you have vendors kind of dueling over whose architecture is best before the market kind of decides and you see the end results of that. And so in this market right now, there's kind of a lot of that. And so what we like to do is get out of some of that technical speak of this architecture or that architecture and just talk about end user benefits and what you can achieve with the products and how we've thought about our choices in this space. Um, what's the raw price per gigabyte? You know, in this day and age where pretty much any flash product that's worth buying does data reduction inherent to the way the, fun the, the product works, um, raw dollars per gig is kind of a, uh, a question that almost doesn't matter anymore. It really comes down to effective and uh, how much data can be stored uh, of your data on the application. And then finally, how do I adjust all the things? And this is one of our biggest challenges we see when we go and sell to customers, is that they have a mental frame for how they buy traditional storage, how they buy that existing legacy um, tier one frame, and all the kind of knobs and whistles and ways they've thought about evaluating that and managing it. And fundamentally, you have to break yourself free of some of that thinking and kind of learn to trust uh, the new storage and new ways to work to get to that kind of panacea of dramatic simplicity. And so when we think about the right questions to be asking, um, we don't think we should ask about a million IOPS. We think you should talk about how does your application perform? How does your application perform by itself and when there's hundreds or thousands of them on the same platform interacting with one another? You know, how predictable is it? How reliable is it? How does it work when things fail? Um, on the architecture uh, sword play, our view here is that it's ultimately all about how you scale capacity and performance. You know, what cost those scale uh, elements come at? what complexity, what flexibility, and what pain you have to go through to upgrade between nodes and between generations. Um, when you think about raw price per gigabyte, for us it's all about usable. What's the cost for my app actual applications? And then finally, um, you know, I think we should be asking questions about simple, not complexity. So how simple is this for my storage admins? How simple is this for my application owners and DBAs? And those are things that we try to really poke on and show value around. So we're going to come back to these questions, but uh, right now what I'd like to do is bring up Neil Bhattajani. Uh, he's our, uh, our chief architect, been with Pure since almost day one. Uh, <clears throat> and he's going to go through a little bit on just an introduction of the product, the uh, functionality of how the Flash Ray and its software, the purity operating environment, work. <laughs> 